But women can sometimes be called orphans or yatama when their husbands die and leave them as widows. These women are called orphan women in the sense that they have no husband to be under his authority so that they might be assisted. Close quote. So this is just showing that the word orphan can be used in more than one sense. The women that are widows that aren't under the authority of a husband, under that governance, they're orphans in the sense that they're by themselves. <clears throat> Imam ibn Jawzi, rahimahullah, he says, quote, So, in regards to the word orphan, if you say that the house is orphaned, al-baytu yatimun, the house is orphaned, it means the house is by itself, or the house is by itself among other houses. So there is not another house in that area. I read this to Sheikh Abu Mansur al lughawi who was our Sheikh. And he said, when the small child reaches the age of adulthood of 15, that child ceases being an orphan and called an orphan. One orphan is a yatim, the plural is yatama, or aytam, and everything that's alone or by itself in Arabic can be called a yatim or a yatima. Now, what is the root word of the word, what is the root word of yatim or yatim? This root word is The word ghafla, that is the root meaning of it, which is unmindfulness. And the orphan is named this because he is forgotten about by others regarding the righteousness due to him. And the woman is sometimes called yatima, who is not married. So when she gets married, she ceases being yatima because now she is protected and safe under governance. Some have said that once she is married for the first time, she ceases being called an orphan woman after that, <coughs> as necessarily known as a thayyib, a woman that has been married. As for the expression masakin, this is the plural of the word miskin. This is a noun that is taken from the word sukun. The reason why is because the one who is poor, because sukun means silence, the one who is poor has been broken with the silence of poverty and suffers under it. <coughs> the exalted one is said, and say to the people goodness. Ibn Kathir, Abu Amr, Nafi'a, Asim and Ibn Amr, Ibn Amr all recite this ayah instead of saying waqulu lin nasi husna they say waqulu they say waqulu lin nasi husna as we mentioned so the ha is with a dhamma however Hamza and Kasai recite waqulu lin nasi hasana and this is permissible as we mentioned before because the expressions husna and hasana have a similar meaning, just as bukhul and bakhala have a similar meaning, or rushud and rashada have a similar meaning, and the description as the same as is the same. Now, when it's said to someone say words of goodness, this is what is meant that you say words of righteousness and goodness to say good words to the people. Now, those who you are to say the good words to, there are two groups of people that they are to say these good words to. One is the Jews that are around them, as said by Ibn Abbas, Ibn Jubayr, Ibn Juraj. And this means to be truthful and to also clarify and bring out the description of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu in the books to those people. Secondly, is that they say the good words to the Ummah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam 
as said by Abu Ali. So they are to say righteousness to the people. Muhammad ibn Ali ibn al Hussein has said, they are to speak to them, speak to them in ways that you would love to be spoken to, to yourselves. Now, some people have said, some people have said that the intent of this ayah is to show leniency to the kuffar in calling them to the, to the religion. However, the leniency that would normally be shown to the unbelievers in all cases has been abrogated by Ayatul Saif, Surah Tawbah, the ninth Surah Ayah 5. Close quote. Now, this ayah. What the, what the imam is referring to is in the case of being lenient to all the unbelievers. Those that are attacking you, those that are persecuting you, and those who have nothing to do with that. The original ruling was everyone that was persecuting you. Whether the unbelievers were killing you, killing members of your family, what have you, they were told, show leniency. But this was abrogated by Surah Tawbah, the ninth Surah, Ayah 5. Those that break their covenants, those that murder you, those that drive you from your homes, now you have a right to defend yourself. And those who break their treaties are punished. They are executed and such. But the ayat about those who have not persecuted you or punished you, then Allah reiterated in Surah Al-Mumtahina, Surah Al-Mumtahina that Allah does not forbid you to show kindness and righteousness to them. But... Ayatul Saif is dealing with the unbelievers that are causing persecution because previous to then, the Muslims had often allowed in certain cases, as we remember from the seer of Ibn Hisham, sometimes outrageous atrocities happen to them. And the Muslims may defend themselves individually, but as a group, sometimes the Muslims would not retaliate and they'd not respond. But Allah said in the ayah, in Ayatul Saif and other ayat, that they are to respond. And part of Ayatul Saif, an appendix to that, is Surah Tawbah, the ninth surah, ayah 29. In which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned that the people of the book are to pay jizya. Imam ibn Jawzi rahimahullah, he then says, quote, Then you turned away. That ayah means that all of you rejected the truth except a small group. So, those who turned away were those who replaced their book and corrupted it. But the second group is also those who believed in the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu in his time. So, those who turned away were those who replaced and rejected the Torah. And those who did not, that small group, were those who believed in the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu in his time and affirmed as such. The Exalted One has then said, وَإِذْ أَخَذْنَا مِيثَاقَكُمْ لَا تَسْفِكُونَ دِمَاءَكُمْ وَلَا تُخْرِجُونَ أَنفُسَكُمْ مِنْ دِيَارِكُمْ ثُمَّ أَقْرَرْتُمْ وَأَنْتُمْ تَشْهَدُونَ ثُمَّ أَنْتُمْ هَؤُلَاءِ تَقْتُلُونَ أَنفُسَكُمْ وَتُخْرِجُونَ فَرِيقًا مِنْكُمْ مِنْ دِيَارِهِمْ تَظَاهَرُونَ عَلَيْهِمْ بِالْإِثْمِ وَالْعُدَوَانِ وَإِنْ يَأْتُوكُمْ أُسَارًا تفادوهم وهو محرم عليكم إخراجهم أفتؤمنون ببعض الكتاب وتكفرون ببعض فما جزاء من يفعل ذلك منكم إلا خزي في الحياة الدنيا وَيَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ يُرَدُّونَ إِلَىٰ أَشَدِّ الْعَذَابِ وَمَا اللَّهُ بِغَافِلٍ عَمَّا تَعْمَلُونَ And when we took your covenant that you are not to spill the blood of one another nor drive yourselves from your homes you affirmed this covenant and bore witness against yourselves but then moments later, here you were, 
killing yourselves one another, driving a group of you from their homes, manifesting against them and conquering over them with sin and wickedness. And if they came to you as prisoners, you used to ransom them and sell them. While this has been made impermissible for you to expel them from their homes and do this. Do you believe in a part of the book and disbelieve in a part? What is the reward of the one that should do such a thing as that from among you except humiliation and disdainment in the earthly life? And on the day of resurrection, they shall be sent over to the greater punishment. And Allah is not unmindful of that which you do. Surah Al-Baqarah, the second surah, ayat 84 to 85. And so when the exalted one says, and when we took from you your covenant that you shall not spill the blood of one another, it means that you are not to spill the blood of one another in fighting, nor are you to expel one another from his house. Ibn Abbas has said, so that day you affirmed that covenant and you are today bearing witness to that. But then your affirmation is actually showing that in the past, you had affirmed this covenant. You had bore witness to it. You held on to it. But then moments later, then here you are, killing one another of yourselves. A Suday narrated from a sheikh who said, this is in regards to one of the children of Israel, one of the tribes, the Bani Quraiva, who were allies to the Aus, and the Nadir, who were allies to the Khazraj. And they used to fight one another and fight against one another in the war of Samir. So Banu Quraiva fought with their allies. And Nadir fought with their allies. The Nadir fought the Quraiva and their allies. And they were victorious over them. And the Nadir expelled them from their homes. And when a man from one of the groups came to one of the others as a prisoner, they gathered everything that he had together and they sold that man. When the Arabs saw this, they found fault with it, saying, how is it that they're killing one another and then taking each other prisoners and ransoming one another as slaves? They said in reply, we've been commanded to ransom them. But it's been made permi impermissible for us to kill them. So the Arabs say, said, then why did you fight them? They said, we have spared. We have been spared and have stopped the humiliation of our allies. And so Allah, in their contradiction, said to them, you were killing one another and expelling each other from their homes. All the way to the ayah, Allah revealed, do you believe in part of the book and reject do you, a part of the book, meaning that they believe in one part of the book, which is ransoming prisoners, but they disbelieve in another part of the book because they were told not to kill one another, and they did. And when the exalted one says that they tadahiruna, they prevailed over one another. Asim, Hamza, and Kisai related as tadahiruna in that they in the text that's been given. But Ibn Kathir, Nafia, Ibn Amr, and Ibn Amr say, Tadhaharuna, or Tadhaharuna, as Abu Ali has recited. And it is all giving the same principle. Some have made Tadhaharuna <coughs> and lightened the tap, while others have made the va to, be, to have a doubled sound, Tadhaharuna. But all of this has been narrated. And when they come to you as prisoners, the exalted one says, when they come to you as prisoners, you ransom them. This means that when they have come to prisoners, when they have come as prisoners, that you take them and hand them over to others. And the ransoming and this ayah means that they are sold on for what they have in their hands and they give them over to others. Do you believe in a part of the book? Meaning taking prisoners and disbelieve in a part? Meaning expelling people from their homes and killing when you were told not to? So Mujahid, the student of Ibn Abbas has said, so are you giving 
the prisoners in war in ransom to the hand of someone besides you, but you're killing the one who's a prisoner with you? 